He's an actor, a singer, a comedian, and the associate pastor of the largest church in Texas. But John Gray is also something else. He's number eight out of eight children. Take a look. John Gray is the associate pastor at Joel Osteen's Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas, the largest church in the U.S. John's talent doesn't stop at the pulpit. He's toured with Kirk Franklin, led worship at national conferences, and entertained thousands as a stand-up comic. But growing up, John was unpopular and never imagined he could do any of those things. In his book, I Am Number Eight, John says everyone has a purpose, even if they feel forgotten. His new show, The Book of John Gray, airs on the OWN Network on Saturdays at 10 p.m. He hopes viewers will see how God's love can help you overcome obstacles to reach your destiny. Please welcome to the 700 Club, the author of I Am Number Eight, John Gray. John, it's great to have you here. You know, you weren't actually the eighth of eight children, right. but you talk about David yes. and others in the Bible who were sort of the forgotten ones. What yeah. does it mean to be number eight? The whole idea of the book starts in 1 Samuel 16, uh, where Samuel is at Jesse's house and he's there on assignment to yes. anoint a king. And uh, trying to make the oil flow on seven <laughs> sons, and the oil doesn't flow. And Samuel says, are all the young men here? And Jesse says, well, there yet remains the youngest, and there he is outside keeping the sheep. And he says, we will not sit down until he comes. And so Jesse calls for David to come in, and he is anointed king of a nation with the dirt of the field still on him. The power of that scripture resonated with me because David was not even considered an option. His father didn't even know his own son's value. <clears throat> and what was interesting to me is that uh, being the eighth son in a patriarchal society, uh, he was the last on the totem pole. He was the last on the list, but he was first in God's heart. And so you can be overlooked and undervalued by men, but not forgotten by God. And so what the, what the book really is about is for people like me who felt maybe marginalized or bullied or, or maybe overlooked uh, or were anonymous for large seasons of our lives, that God actually uses anonymity to produce his glory. And what Jesus teaches us, those who uh, identify with this book, is that the process and the humility that, that comes from the process is exactly what the Spirit of God needs to permeate the earth right now. We need people who have gone through the pain of rejection to be able to identify with other people's pain. Oftentimes when things have been handed to you, it, you have a little less empathy for people who struggle. Sure. But this book is for anybody who's ever felt like, I know I'm called to something greater, but right now it's not making sense. This book helps to make sense Talk of those areas. Talk a little areas. bit about your own life. You were an only child. Your mm -hmm. relationship with your dad was not what you hoped or wanted or needed it to yeah. be. But your mom was the one oh, who yes. kept calling forth That's right. My vision. mother was then and is now a phenomenal woman of God. My mother and father divorced when I was probably about four and a half. Mm -hmm. And my father was not a strong part of my life. I saw him four times in my life. But my mother uh, pushed me in the things of God, and she lived a Christ life in front of me. And at seven years old, I knew who Jesus was for myself, and I accepted Christ. And at 13, I knew I was called to ministry. But that didn't diminish the struggle of things. I mean, you no. had a lot of rejection from kids your age, people who didn't understand who you were or value who you Absolutely. were outside your family. How did you deal with that? I think, honestly, you, you cope the best way you can, especially when, when people are making fun of you on the yeah. bus every day or, you know, I, I, my mother had to cut corners, so she had to cut my hair. So I didn't get to go to the barbershop, so the my haircut cut, wasn't yeah. always the best. <laughs> and I used to suck my thumb, so I had buck teeth <laughs> while I was getting braces, so sometimes I was whistling like, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> and so I, I, what, what it did is it actually gave me a, a platform to laugh because laughter does good like a medicine. So I started compensating by, by turning that into laughter and godly laughter. My mom always spoke life to me, but it didn't change the pain of being rejected and not really fitting in with the cool crowd. 
So what advice would you give to people who are watching right now saying, I feel like I'm a number eight in my life? What would you say to them? I would tell them to reference the scripture and look at how, how our Heavenly Father has always done miraculous things with the forgotten ones, mm -hmm. the ones that have been overlooked. Actually, that's kind of his pattern. It is. <laughs> and whether it's the number eight in David or he who was coming from his line, Jesus, you know, Nazareth, does anything good come out of Nazareth? Born in a stable. You know, yeah. And so here, our Savior, born in a manger, overlooked, undervalued, nobody saw him coming. But of course, he's the Savior of the world. And, and God specializes in taking broken situations and creating value. And so I love my Savior for that. And what the I am number eight represents, eight, of course, biblically means new beginnings. And so God can begin again in your life when you give your life to the Lord and when you decide that trusting him is better than trusting your own intuition mm -hmm. and your own ability. Then you begin to watch God open doors. I've been saying recently, this is the season of the open door, not the knocked door. If you got a knock, that's not it's your not door. <laughs> this is the season of the open door. And for those who are the number eights, the ones who yeah. God is going to bring a new beginning, we are the ones I believe God is positioning to speak life to broken people. Yeah. He's the He's the one that's opening the door. So our job is to stand behind him and trust him for that process. Season of an open door for you too, your own TV show. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it, that, is that based on your life? It is. It's a docu-series that follows my wife and I and our two children, and it's on the Oprah Winfrey Network. And the, the thing that's interesting about it is that the show isn't just about us. It's about how we connect with people outside the church yeah. and help them walk to places of healing and wholeness. And what I told the people as we were going through this process, I said, let me tell you, I'm unapologetically a Christian. I'm going to talk about Jesus. If that's a problem, you don't want me. If you, <laughs> if you don't want me talking about the Lord, then find somebody else. I will not uh, minimize my Savior for the purposes of television. Yeah. I serve at the command of my King, and they, oh, they are willing and have been very gracious. There are clips of my sermons in every episode. And so it's, a, it's the intersection of faith and humanity, and it's what, what the world needs yeah. for, and, to see. And it's an open door. You can check out John's TV show, The Book of John Gray, Saturday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern on the OWN channel. John's book is called I Am Number Eight. It's great reading. Every one of us needs to read about how God uses what we least admire or even honor. It's available wherever books are sold. We also have a web exclusive Facebook interview with John. You can watch that by going to facebook.com slash 700 club. Thank you, my friend. Thank great you to so have much. you here. God Honor bless to be you. Here.